CPS is back in session today after closing Friday for Vaccine Awareness Day. City workers also got paid time off to get themselves and their children vaccinated. So how did this effort called Protect Your Health on the 12th go? Joining me is Dr. Jennifer Sal. She is the Chief Medical Officer at the Chicago Department of Public Health. Good morning to you. Nice to see you this morning. Good morning. So are the numbers in? How many students and others got vaccinated on Friday and did this push work? You know, we're still waiting to get all of our data from Friday's uh, initiative, but what we do know is that since CPS at their clinics and their mobile events started giving vaccines to those 5 to 11 year olds, they started November 10th, that they have vaccinated nearly a thousand students. And so that's just the CPS sites alone. The vast majority of those students got vaccinated on November 12th on Friday. And we know that there were hospitals, healthcare providers, other mobile events organized by community based organizations around the city, including this uh, Chicago Department of Public Health who were full in terms of the interest that they had um, at their events. So excited to see what the numbers are going to turn out to have been. But we know that CPS alone vaccinated has vaccinated nearly a thousand students since they began vaccinating those five to 11 year olds. So I'm curious if you guys have deadlines for goal set. I mean, you have um, you had kids only clinics. You were offering incentives and and, and are offering incentives, $50 gift cards. Chicago's in home vaccination program, I understand, will now be expanded to that younger age group. Uh, do you have goal settings for you know this date, this month? What are you guys looking at in the long term? Say by the end of the year, what's your goal? You know, we want our, all of our youth who are eligible to get vaccinated to get vaccinated. And we know that this is going to be an ongoing process. We want our families to first and foremost, reach out to their healthcare providers. If your child has not been vaccinated yet, reach out to your pediatric healthcare provider because we wanna make sure that you get the accurate information that you need to make this decision to vaccinate your children. So, you know, again, an ongoing process throughout the next couple of months, we want our youth to get vaccinated as soon as possible as we move into the winter season. Um, but the important thing that we're trying to focus on is to answer the questions that families have about their child's health and about the COVID vaccine. And we encourage you all to reach out to your healthcare provider so you can make this decision. Let's talk about that because there was, I think, a Kaiser Permanente study a couple of weeks ago that found a lot of parents are going to adopt and wait and see attitude when it comes to vaccinating their younger children. So what can you do to convince them to get their children vaccinated now? And what do you want them to know about what we know about this and how safe it will be for their little ones? Absolutely. So, you know, the FDA, the CDC, they did a rigorous review of the data. There were thousands of children who were enrolled in the Pfizer study. So we know that this vaccine is not only efficacious, but it is safe. Uh, in the clinical trials, they found that um, over 90%, that the efficacy rate was over 90% in terms of symptomatic COVID-19 for these youth. There were no hospitalizations and there were no deaths. And it's important to note um, that vaccination for the five to 11 year olds, very, very important for a number of reasons. One, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, five to 11 year olds had the lowest numbers of COVID-19, but in recent weeks, we know that our youth under the age of 18 here in Chicago have had the highest numbers of COVID-19. And that makes sense because they have not, the five to 11 year olds have not been eligible for vaccination until recently. And you know, while our youth have thankfully been spared in terms of hospitalizations and deaths throughout this pandemic, we know that youth can still get COVID, they can transmit it and they can get hospitalized. And unfortunately they can die too. So we wanna make sure that we protect our youth from COVID-19. It is a preventable disease. The other thing that's important to note is that our youth have been impacted in so many other ways during this pandemic. This is a critical time for those five to 11 year olds, for our youth in terms of their development, whether it's their physical health or mental health, their social, social emotional development, their intellectual ac academic uh, development. And we know that during this pandemic with whether it was difficulties accessing healthcare, uh, not being in school, sports teams and other clubs being closed because of the pandemic, we know that our youth have been severely impacted in terms of this development that they need to be doing during this time. The vaccine will allow them to protect themselves, to protect those around them, for them to be able to go to school without worry that they'll get or give COVID-19, for them to be able to participate in their sports, 
their soccer, their baseball, their basketball, football, whatever it is, to engage with others safely. And so very important. Uh, we have good data. It's safe. It's efficacious. I took my five-year-old to get vaccinated. I believe in the vaccine, and I have to say it, that this is a very hopeful and optimistic time for the pandemic because our youth can finally get vaccinated. So you think that's gonna make a big dent, I can imagine. Okay, Dr. Arwadi has said she's concerned about COVID surge after the holidays. Our numbers seem to be going up a little bit. Uh, what do you want uh, people in general to know about this? Is this expected because it's winter and more people are coming indoors? Are you concerned that there will be a surge? So very important point, our numbers have gone up. Our, case, our new daily cases are above 400 now and our positivity has gone up as well. This was to be expected, you know, people are moving indoors. We know that transmission is easier indoors. It's not like we can go outside as easily as we were able to during the summer months. So it's an important time for those who are eligible for vaccination to get vaccinated, for those who aren't vaccinated to make sure that you are continuing to do all of the preventive measures that we have been doing for the past year and a half, masking, social distancing, if you're sick, staying at home. And so with the holidays coming, we know that families are going to be gathering and we want folks to be able to enjoy each other, but we want folks to be doing it safely. The number one way to protect yourself is to get vaccinated. But it is important, we are closely watching our numbers. We know too that we are expecting a full flu season this year uh, because people are gathering more. And so it's important too, if you haven't already gotten your flu vaccine to go ahead and get that too. We are starting to see a slight rise in our flu cases in Chicago. Okay, Dr. Jennifer Sal, the Chief Medical Officer at Chicago Department of Public Health. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. Have a great day. We look forward to getting those numbers Thank from you, you later well. too as well.